7. Mysticism, Ecstasy, and Inspiration Mysticism, as the technique of the cultivation of the consciousness of the presence of God, is altogether praiseworthy. But when such practices lead to social isolation and culminate in religious fanaticism, they are all but reprehensible. Altogether too frequently, that which the overwrought mystic evaluates as divine inspiration is the uprisings of his own deep mind. The contact of the mortal mind with its indwelling adjuster, while often favored by devoted meditation, is more frequently facilitated by wholehearted and loving service in unselfish ministry to one's fellow creatures. The great religious teachers and the prophets of past ages were not extreme mystics. They were God-knowing men and women who best served their God by unselfish ministry to their fellow mortals. Jesus often took his apostles away by themselves for short periods to engage in meditation and prayer, but for the most part he kept them in service contact with the multitudes. The soul of man requires spiritual exercise as well as spiritual nourishment. Religious ecstasy is permissible when resulting from sane antecedents, but such experiences are more often the outgrowth of purely emotional influences than a manifestation of deep spiritual character. Religious persons must not regard every vivid psychologic presentiment and every intense emotional experience as a divine revelation or a spiritual communication. Genuine spiritual ecstasy is usually associated with great outward calmness and almost perfect emotional control. But true prophetic vision is a super-psychologic presentiment. Such visitations are not pseudo-hallucinations, neither are they trance-like ecstasies. The human mind may perform in response to so-called inspiration when it is sensitive either to the uprisings of the subconscious or to the stimulus of the superconscious. In either case, it appears to the individual that such augmentations of the content of consciousness are more or less foreign. Unrestrained mystical enthusiasm and rampant religious ecstasy are not the credentials of inspiration, supposedly divine credentials. The practical test of all these strange religious experiences of mysticism, ecstasy, and inspiration is to observe whether these phenomena cause an individual 1. to enjoy better and more complete physical health, 2. to function more efficiently and practically in his mental life, 3. more fully and joyfully to socialize his religious experience, 4. more completely to spiritualize his day-by-day -day living while faithfully discharging the commonplace duties of routine mortal existence. 5. To enhance his love for and appreciation of truth, beauty, and goodness. 6. To conserve currently recognized social, moral, ethical, and spiritual values. 7. To increase his spiritual insight, God consciousness. But prayer has no real association with these exceptional religious experiences. When prayer becomes overmuch aesthetic, when it consists almost exclusively in beautiful and blissful contemplation of paradisiacal divinity, it loses much of its socializing influence and tends toward mysticism and the isolation of its devotees. There is a certain danger associated with overmuch private praying, which is corrected and prevented by group praying, community devotions.